so good morning so today yeah so uh, it's really a very good morning because uh, we had uh, a good spell of rain uh so the uh, kind of uh, weather is really fine so let me give you uh, an overview of uh, what we are going to discuss in this session today we are going to take up uh, few more aspects of learning skills if you remember in the last session that uh, we had uh, i had given you an idea about uh, soft skills and uh, how learning skill is one of the most important skills as far as uh, soft skills is concerned because if you know how to learn things then you will have an edge over others now once again i would like to highlight the most important uh, soft skills that we have in our uh, uh, syllabus the first soft skill is listening skill so you might say that uh, what is new because uh, we always listen to people and we always listen to music and all these things but then listening is not just a kind of uh, physiological aspect listening involves physiological as well as uh, psychological uh, aspects and that's why listening has uh, got a very specific kind of uh, skill so there is something called active listening so if you learn how to listen to then you will be able to learn things better because you are a good listener and if you want to be a good speaker then the first quality is that you have to be a good listener then and then you will be able to listen to you will be able to uh, speak better so listening skill is very important soft skill another important soft skill is team work skill as you know in corporate culture it's very important that you learn how to work in teams because you might be uh, a wonderful uh, person in terms of skills as an individual but when it comes to team work you may not uh, gel well with others so team work skill is very important in order to be successful in uh, 21st century third important skill is emotional intelligence skill you might be wonderful at uh, um, your technical skill you may have the skill that is required for your post but emotional intelligence calls for ability to manage one's emotions and ability to manage emotions of others that means uh, how you react to the people that is very important 
so if you know how to manage your emotions and if you know how to manage emotions of others then you can kind of uh, navigate through emotionally challenging situations so these aspects are very important uh, in terms of uh, emotional intelligence so you might be uh, having a good iq but that is not enough because uh, if you are not uh, having good eq that is emotional quotient emotional intelligence then uh, you will not be able to perform well in your uh, professional as well as personal life uh, there is an expert called uh, daniel goleman daniel goleman has uh, worked a lot in the field of uh, emotional intelligence and uh, daniel goleman uh, highlights uh, some of the uh, features of uh, emotional intelligence uh, how emotional intelligence uh, is important in the field of uh, um, corporate uh, world so emotional intelligence is a very important soft skill then the next skill is assertive skill you need to have an ability uh, you need to have uh, this uh, skill to assert your point of view so assertive skill is ability to convince to persuade people about your point of view which is a very important thing because uh, uh, you might have very uh, clear idea as to how things work but unless and until you uh, are successful in convincing others if you can drive home your point then you will be able to uh, get the results the, the desired results so uh, assertive skill is another important skill and then comes learning skills so we all are lifelong learners because uh, learning doesn't stop with uh, uh, formal education you may have done your uh, bachelor's your masters your uh, doctoral uh, uh, studies post doctoral studies whatever but we are all lifelong learners because uh, there are gray areas for uh, each and every person for example um, person a might be very good at uh, science might might be very good at uh, physics or chemistry or biology for that matter but it's quite likely that the that the person is not so good in other skills that means uh, in other fields of study like humanities or for that matter performing arts and things like that so we are all lifelong learners we learn new languages we learn new skills now let us uh, look at the scenario of uh, 21st century we know that in 21st century we have a very big challenge and the challenge is in the form of uh, change in skill sets in terms of uh, job requirement in the past if a person uh, is good at uh, kind of uh, the skill of uh, typing then the person would get a job uh, as a typist and the person would uh, work as a typist for his lifetime but now that is not the case because uh, now many jobs are uh, carried out by 
machines, uh, especially um, kind of uh, very sophisticated uh, technology. So many of the jobs that we have uh, right now will not exist uh, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Even many people lost their jobs uh, during this pandemic time. And it's quite likely that they will not uh, get these jobs back because uh, uh, many jobs uh, are kind of, uh, they, they have disappeared. So, if you want to survive in this uh, competitive world, if you want to survive in this uh, uh, 21st century, then what you need is uh, constant upskilling and reskilling. So, you need to learn new things. So, the first important uh, takeaway for you is to understand that uh, you have to keep on learning. So, if you don't uh, find opportunities to learn things, then you will be kind of outdated. In the past, it was necessary for uh, people working in uh, areas like uh, software, but now it is important for everybody because whatever the field might be, you might be a doctor. In the past, people used to uh, do a traditional kind of uh, traditional kind of uh, practice in terms of surgery or in terms of medicine. But now, a good surgeon is not just expected to have knowledge about uh, physiology of human beings, but the person should be good at uh, technical skill, should be good at uh, uh, should be good at uh, operating robot because now robotic surgery is something that is uh, very popular in the field of medicine. Now you might be good at uh, um, using different uh, uh, medical uh, implements like uh, Caesar and uh, uh, things like that. But now that thing is not as important as your ability to work with uh, machines like robots, artificial uh, uh, intelligence uh, is there. So at the end of the day, if you are not uh, having this kind of skill and the most important thing is if you don't have this uh, uh, what we call as uh, craving for learning, then you will be an outdated person. Then it's quite likely that uh, uh, you will not have uh, the kind of opportunities uh, which other people uh, might have. So it's very important that you continue learning new things. So having said that, uh, let us uh, look at uh, some of the aspects. So if you look at the key principles of learning, there are various theories that uh, demonstrate the way that people learn. So people learn best when they are treated with respect and are not talked down or treated as ignorant. Because uh, if I am learning French or German, then for me, it's a totally new language. It's a totally new field. So, uh, if if the teacher is making fun of me or is not very 
sympathetic uh, with me in terms of uh, learning then it's quite likely that uh, i will not learn so <clears throat> learning opportunities should when possible be linked to previous positive experience so uh, if you have an experience of uh, learning something uh, in your childhood and if you connect your present uh, task present learning uh, uh, with the past experience then it's likely that uh, you will have a kind of uh, good uh, beginning in terms of uh, new learning experience when possible learners should take part in the planning of learning activities learners should be encouraged to be self directing in terms of goal setting since this usually improves commitment and motivation and increases participation so uh, learner should also be a part of uh, the planning in terms of activities that are uh, needed uh, so it's not just the teacher it's not just the facilitator but uh, even the learner uh, has a very important say in terms of uh, deciding about uh, the activities people learn best when their physical environment is comfortable so you need uh, a good chair or a good bench uh, a table in group situations a positive emotional and supportive environment is also important interaction with a facilitator is vital so it's not just uh, one way communication it's always two way communication then and then you will learn best people need to be able to react question and voice opinions on what they are learning so uh, if you don't uh, have the opportunity to uh, raise questions if you don't have an opportunity to uh, share your views then learning will not be effective learning activities and or delivery need to be varied to cover the range of different learning styles because uh, different people learn in different ways uh, so you may have people who are uh, uh, good at learning uh, uh, learning uh, things from uh, uh, from books some people they learn best uh, when uh, they experiment things they they have the uh, hands on experience so there are uh, various uh, learners and uh, accordingly there are uh, various learning styles so the facilitator will have to plan the activities in such a way that uh, uh, different uh, learners having different learning styles they are uh, they are satisfied otherwise what will happen if you keep on lecturing if you keep on having uh, only one uh, type of activity then it will uh, satisfy only uh, a portion of your uh, learners portion of your entire group of learners but if you want to uh, want to have an impact on the larger group then what you need to do is you need to uh, understand that uh, there are different learners and people learn in different ways there are some people who learn from uh, from quizzes from uh, questionnaires Uh, from project work role play so th- there are many tasks activities that can uh, that can result into uh, learning so learning style is very important 
another important aspect is instant rewards help so the facilitator should know that uh, if the learner has uh, uh, has uh, been successful in learning a small aspect of the task then that particular learner should be rewarded uh, by by uh, by speaking few words of praise in public so that the learner is encouraged then self evaluation and reflective practice is important so it's not just the facilitator but even the learner should keep on uh, doing this uh, self evaluation and uh, should keep on uh, reflecting on the activities or on the tasks so uh, there is something called packed learning cycle so p stands for procedure a stands for apply c for consider and t for transform so uh, these are the four uh, stages uh, in which uh, learning takes place then there are different uh, approaches to learning and uh, we we may call them uh, theories so most learning theories fall into one or uh, more of these approaches so which are the um, learning theories let us have a look at uh, few uh, very important learning theories so the first one is behaviorist approach which is concerned with learners responding to some sort of stimulus so there is a kind of uh, uh, stimulus and uh, response so people um, learn in this particular way then there is something called cognitive approach uh, which is based on knowledge and knowledge retention and then there is a humanist approach which is based on explanations of individual experience so the uh, facilitator might uh, share his or her individual experiences and that that would help uh, the person in terms of uh, learning something new then there are four different uh, learning styles so uh, according to uh, david call uh, uh, there is a kind of uh, learning cycle uh, but apart from call uh, there were two experts called peter honey and alan mumford uh, and uh, they have kind of uh, suggested uh, four different uh, learning styles first one the first category is that of activists now who are the activists activists they learn by doing they don't want to hear what they should be doing they want to dive in head first and have a go so you have uh, learners who do not want to read theories they just want to have the hands on experience first and then then the next step will come so activists are likely to say let us just give it a go and see what happens can i try it out so uh, they are kind of uh, um, very impatient in the sense that uh, they are not uh, going to listen to you uh, they are not going to read theories but they just want to say that okay uh, can i try it out so i want to try it out and then i may read theory next one is pragmatists pragmatists care about what works in the real world so they are they aren't interested in abstract concept concepts jene kai ne apde bahu eva good vicharo ma e loko ne interest nahi they just want to know if it works so pragmatists they are interested in the fact that uh, what works in the real world they are just interested in that they are not interested in something that is imaginary so pragmatists are likely to say how will it work in practice i just don't see how this is relevant so uh, for pragmatists relevance of things that they are learning is very important if they think that it's not relevant they will not learn they will not uh, um, 
waste their time reflectors like to think about what they are learning so reflectors they keep on uh, reflecting on uh, the activities that they are doing um, the the um, the learning that they are having they want to understand things thoroughly before they try them out so they keep on reflecting on the uh, on on the uh, aspects that are related to the task the activity and then reflectors are likely to say let me just think about this for a moment don't let us rush into anything so they don't want to rush into anything they they want to reflect so there is something called reflective observation so reflective observation is another important aspect of learning cycle so you have uh, something called uh, concrete experience then you have something called reflective observation then you have something called abstract conceptualization and then you have something called active experimentation so uh, this is the learning cycle so for some people they start from uh, concrete experience then they then they go for reflective observation then they try to connect with uh, some abstract concepts and then finally they want to uh, try out try things out so that's how it works for uh, some people but as i said earlier some people want to start with uh, something called active experimentation they just uh, don't want to uh, read theories they don't want to um, read journals and uh, articles they don't want to um, uh, they don't want to listen to expert lectures they just want to try out things and uh, then they may connect with uh, uh, some other aspects of uh, learning but then they are kind of uh, uh, people who wish to try things out theorists like to understand how the new learning fits into their framework and into previous theories they are likely to be uncomfortable with things that don't fit with what they already know so theorists are likely to say but how does this fit in with me so they they are kind of having a, a very um, specific framework and if if the new learning fits into that then they'll be satisfied otherwise not uh, i would just like to understand the principles behind this a bit more so in order to learn effectively it's important to be able to use all the four styles so um, we should remember that uh, whenever there is a group of uh, 20 learners or 50 learners 100 learners then you are likely to have uh, some learners who are activists some learners who are pragmatists few of them might be reflectors and uh, few of them might be theorists so it is the job or it is the task of facilitator of teacher who is designing uh, tasks to design tasks in such a way that uh, all the four categories of learners the theorists uh, reflector pragmatist activists they enjoy learning so it's very important uh, for a facilitator then comes eight types of learning styles another uh, uh, set of uh, learning styles recommended or uh, uh, kind of outlined by uh, human behavior specialist scott black and uh, uh, he he made use of uh, howard gardner's uh, research uh, and uh, put it into practical use 
creating one of the first measurable and predictable ways of uh, determining a person's overall overall learning style so according to scott black uh, there are mainly eight learning styles now which are they the first one is the linguistic learner now what is linguistic linguistic is science of uh, or the systematic uh, way of learning a language so linguistic learner is basically learning things from language that learner will be interested in reading writing speaking so these are some of the aspects of language so the linguistic learner is one who learns best through linguistic skills including reading writing listening or speaking sometimes it's a combination of these methods so for example if a linguistic learner wanted to tackle a new skill their best method of learning would be to read about it then listen to an audio recording and take notes on it so you can understand that it involves reading it involves listening and it also involves writing so these three skills uh, are involved in the entire uh, exercise finally concentrating it would require speaking about it and finally speaking possibly writing about it extensively so again it it could lead to uh, some other aspect of uh, linguistic learning not surprisingly some of the best teachers and professors are linguistic learners so generally you find uh, teachers and uh, professors having this kind of uh, learning style it's in the nature of the profession so uh, it's it's quite likely that uh, people who have uh, who are in this kind of profession they generally uh, they they tend to have uh, this kind of uh, learning style then you have uh, another variety which is known as uh, the naturalist as the name suggests the naturalist learns by working with and experiencing nature so they uh, learn best from nature we had uh, uh, we had uh, instances uh, where in uh, great personalities learned from nature so uh, you learn from nature because nature is a great teacher if this sounds a lot like a scientist it's because that's how scientists learn even the scientists learn from nature uh let me tell you uh that uh, one of the greatest scientists of modern world is uh, uh, charles darwin charles darwin has given us the theory of evolution but charles darwin he learned many things by observing natural phenomena the naturalist loves experiences loves observing the world around them and captures the best information or knowledge through experimentation so as i said uh, charles darwin uh, was a naturalist he was a scientist but then he was a naturalist kind of uh, learner so he observed natural phenomenon he experimented with things and then he came out with theories so uh, that's how the naturalists work so uh, 
uh, in the next lecture in the next session we'll have uh, discussion about uh, few more aspects related to learning skill so thank you all